Jeremy as Quickier, and today I'll be going over how I turn my CNC router into a light painting machine. Light painting, also known as light graffiti, involves taking an image for several seconds or minutes. During this time, the camera captures all the light that enters the lens, even if it doesn't take place simultaneously. This means that a car's headlight might be a line, a twirled LED might be an orb, or as seen in this video, a light on a CNC router can appear to be anything you want. This actually isn't my first try at automated light graffiti. Actually, it isn't even my first attempt to turn a bitmap into a control code for a CNC router. However, after finding Matthew Rayfield's web app for dot matrix plotting on a 3D printer, I decided to use it not to write with a pen, but with LED lighting. You can see my fixture that I made here, this Arduino Nano based fixture, and follow along to see how I developed the process. To start out with, I thought I'd develop the whole thing on my, on my little Monoprice Mini Select printer. I actually made a fixture for this that would clamp on to the, the feed tube or the top of the feed tube holder. While the fixture was pretty good, I, I soon realized that the Y axis actually was not moving on the top. So it wasn't really gonna work with, with uh, light painting, only with actual markers. So if you, if you do wanna use this with a marker, this is a good fixture and I'll put this on GitHub with the other stuff. First print wasn't too good, second print looked a lot better, and this is just tapped for a 632 screw. Just slides on and screws on. Well, it's not gonna work for my light graffiti application. I think it could be useful elsewhere, and I've put the files on GitHub if you wanna check it out yourself. But for actual light graffiti, I decided I'd turn to my larger CNC router, which I could use for the same thing, but in a much bigger scale. I modified my, my dust collector that I, I'd made before modified some stuff from that to actually make it so that it would just clamp on with magnets just just come off on and off very easily this would be great too if i crashed the tooling it would just just come off automatically so i embedded the three disc magnets and then put a button on the bottom that would turn the light on so instead of instead of ink developing a picture it would actually just develop a picture in light that was a theory at least so I soldered everything on just a single single LED with a single CR2032 battery. Hooked everything up with these, these lever nuts. This would make everything modular, which would actually come in handy later. All the holes on this are, are clearance hole for a 632 and there's some holes in the bottom. So if I did want to make this into something different later, it would be very, very easy. And you can see there it just, just clamps right on. And then when lowered to the correct point, the light comes on. So in theory, that should make a, a dot instead of ink, it's just a dot in light. I went ahead and put an image of my initials into the web app by Matthew Rayfield. And from there, it spelled out JSC. I, could, I was just testing it there during the day. And then I waited until night, so everything was really, really dark in my garage to try to actually do the light graffiti. Looks pretty good there, blinking away. And that doesn't look so good, but some other, other tries at it. Another try at it look, looked pretty good. You can see JSC, but it looks like it's lifting off, like a spaceship taking off from the ground. Looks a little bit better after some Photoshop, but still needed something a little bit better. So I decided to make a diffuser for it out of two pieces of, of PLA, printed that out, designed it in Infusion, then printed it out. The base would be black, and then the other part would be supposedly clear PLA, which isn't quite clear, but it it does do a really nice job of diffusing it. So once that was designed, I printed it all out. There's the black part and then the white part, the white see-through part. Pressed it together, fit together quite nicely. I was happy with that, didn't have to use any glue. And because of the way I designed it, I just pressed those studs into the, the holes that I drilled for us, or designed for a 632. There I am testing out the second version. Looks a lot better. You can see I did make an error on the top there, or on the bottom. And then there's the spaceship from Galaga in all red. Looks pretty good too, I think. But one thing that I needed, I decided that to blank out the bottom so I didn't have this huge red, red spot. Marker didn't work quite correctly, so I spray painted as well. And after that, it all pressed in again. So with that, it decided to give it another try. And the JSC Jeremy S. Cook does look pretty good. As does this OPA. Uh, if you've seen 
the Expanse, you'll recognize that logo. And then somebody requested that I, I do a Cyberpunk logo, which didn't turn out real well, but I'll give it another try in a second. From there, I thought it would be better if I had a black background for everything. Spray painted that. A brush probably would have been better a roller, but that's what I had. And I also decided that I could make an RGB, RGB assembly with Arduino Nano. This would make allow me to put red, green, green, blue, and then a combination that I put later as, as yellow, and also random colors. Put some heat streak on that to keep everything together. And again, these lever nuts made everything nice and modular. So after putting that all on, you can see it blinking away and a little pressed on with the magnet and looks pretty good. There's actually a photo of me. This is like a self portrait from earlier. If you, if you check that out earlier in the video and looks pretty, pretty crazy. This is the random light function with the Tetris blocks. And then I tried it in yellow. I tried that Cyberpunk logo again in yellow. Didn't turn out great, but a little bit better, I guess. And here's another character that you may or may not recognize. So that's it for this iteration. I've got a lot more things that I've, I could do with this, including the continuous lines that you can see here that's designed as actual an actual G-code pattern. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or even subscribe to see what comes next. Or if you want to leave me a comment, I'd, I'd love that too. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.